Welcome back again, folks. Tonight, we're trying to show you the theory before we go to the reality stuff. And we will be talking about the perfect recovery. Now, what are we seeing about perfect recovery is we talked about the recovery last week on many, um, on many tickers and on many occasions. But what we see is a situation where, let's say, ticker is trying hard to break through, trying hard to break through, and again, trying hard, and it doesn't want to get through this line because it hits its head many, many times. And then you know, for, all, for a reason or another, uh, it goes that way, big time. What to you would be the perfect recovery? Now, in this particular case, you might say, well, here's a line, right? Because we're hitting a previous support line, you are correct. But the perfect recovery would be we reach back up to the previous resistance. Now, if this was created by bad news, any news related market has been driven lately by news. So basically, if this big drop is news related, what will make such a difference that it will break through these lines, these tops? Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm just saying that if before we had this bad news, it was hitting its head on a top. Now, since we had the bad news, it would recover to a certain level what will it take to make it cross this previous resistance level? It would take something very huge. Do you agree on that? Correct. Now, if we break down due to a very bad news on the market, what I call the perfect recovery is a situation where we will rise back to where we were before that news happened doesn't say that now we are extremely bullish in order to cross that. But what we're doing, we're pretty much erasing what happened in that bad news. It can be news related to one particular ticker. Let's say a restaurant has a E. coli outbreak and it just makes it drop. And first thing you know, oh, sorry, it wasn't that. It was another virus that someone had. So it's nothing related to that restaurant. We're going back up. Now it can be lately has been related to a situation, a political situation in the world it creates a lot of fear. We go down and then someone comes back up saying, well, we're doing our best to contain all this situation. So we are now coming back to where we were before the extreme fear happened. I call that a perfect recovery. So basically, when you see a situation where there's a gap down or a huge drop, your final target, no matter what, on the day is to aim for the perfect recovery. And this is the real reason why are we showing or saying or living in a world where the news that we had just presented then is completely different? Are we in a situation where all this fear of crossing the line is gone? If the answer is no, well, you have all the rights to reclaim the line, but you can be absolutely positive that it will bounce its head on this line once again. Now, this, let's say this was a gap down at the gate, at the open. You draw this again very for a cleaner situation. Did this, 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 that's the end of the day. And then we open it, opening on the gap down on the next day. Now, if we rise, all the way to here, we are in a situation where 
it looks like on this day, right? On this day, it looks extremely bullish, right? Do you think it's going to cross this line without any rejection? No, it won't. It's the perfect, this line to this line, it's the perfect recovery. And this should be your target always. I'm not talking about a long monthly swing. I'm talking about intraday perfect recovery. It was yesterday, two days ago, something that is very close uh, expiration, very close time frame. We are looking at a perfect recovery on this kind of situation. Now let's move to a uh, multiple examples to show you exactly what I mean with this. And before I take you to examples, um, this one is the top line, right? I was mentioning we are trying to cross it. The opposite, let's say we have another situation. I, I don't want to mix you up in anything, but I want to show you what how to find the perfect recovery. Let's say a, it's on a downtrend instead of the uptrend. It, it goes to a support line, goes up, comes down to support line, goes up, comes down to support line. Like all this, this here is kind of a downtrend. This triple bottom kind of thing, right? Then if we were to open to the downside here, obviously your perfect recovery level would be this previous support, right? Because it's hard to determine the upper line to the top. Now, when you join multiple tickers together, all the big movers, right? You guys know Microsoft, you know Apple, you know the, the Googles, you know Tesla, Facebook, Amazon. These six are about the a quarter of the S&P 500 um, weight. So when you look at how these guys move according to the rest of the market or uh, together, you look for this perfect recovery to find the top that you're looking for. So, low, so let's move to real charts. Now this is the Apple chart on the five minute. What I want to show you is a downtrend that we just showed you. It's coming in a downtrend. You see it's coming down. However, it bounced its head on this line, this line creating a level where we have this guy hitting, this guy hitting, this guy hitting, right? Let's put a line on this here, just so you guys are really clear on this one. See this? where we're all pretty much touching uh, together. This was bought at the bottom. See how I'm drawing the line? I can be a little higher than that, but this is pretty close. Now, if we were to draw, right, this is what happened. On the next day, fear of an event. We opened up lower pre-market. It just kept on tanking. Where would you see the perfect recovery level, right? You would see the perfect recovery level to this line that we just drew. Now I'll show you moving sideways and this is the perfect recovery level. It looks like magic, but it's not. You, what, you drew, what you did is this. You have a level and it starts to move up, where will it go to? First target, you know, if I had been playing it, I would have aimed for that, but it kept on going. Where do you go to? Well, we looked at the, it was a downtrend, support, support, all hits that. This is where it's going to hit. Let's move for another. This time we're looking at Facebook. Um, sorry, Mark. Uh, I 
cat to cat and Facebook is Facebook. You call it meta, but you know, um, we're coming down. Same as Apple count down on a support. Here it becomes resistance, resistance. You all see this line, right? And I'll take you to today where we have this big drop, right? Where will be, before I show you the result, where will be the perfect recovery? It should be meeting this level, right? You guys want to have a target? That's what you need to, to get. This is the perfect recovery. Where would I have taken this first? Would have been this line, right? Like we just showed you on, on, um, on Apple. But this is the perfect recovery. We're not looking at um, making some profit. We're looking at the perfect line just to make sure that when it reaches that, it ain't going to cross it. And this is where, see the same yellow line here? I'll move it to, sorry, I just moved it. But, you know, I'll just put it back to where it was. Rate, support, resistance. Where does it hit? We reach precisely to that. Let's move again to another. Remember folks that all the examples I'm showing now are all from the same day, just to show you the correlation between the relationship between all of them. And so when you have a ticker reaching the perfect recovery level, all of them should probably reach that line together. So that's when you get your ding ding signal that you should be taking profit. Um, this is AMD that we played earlier this week. Uh, it was uh, moving to the upside. We were really bullish on it. And it reached a top here. Let's draw a line together, right? We are drawing a line where we're catching pretty much all the tops here. You guys agree we could go a little higher than that, maybe around here, where we're catching a top, right? This is maybe a little overtaking. Uh, then it's the real top, top again, not crossing it. All this not now is probably telling you that if we reject that, eventually it's going to become bearish. See this cross on this uh, 250 EMA crossing, 50 going below. So this meant for a bearish turn, and that was yesterday. Um, it started, you know, I told you about fear, what was happening, the not knowing what was happening. Basically, we opened on the way down. And before I show you a little uh, more of where we're going, you all agree that this is the low, pre-market low. You see this wick? I'll show you a little later. Uh, but stay with me here. This is the pre-market low. Where would your perfect recovery be? This. And this is what I showed you before. What news would make us go from this level, which is about 102-ish, 103, to this level, which is 118.44 in a day? What news would allow us to even cross it further rather than stopping on a previous resistance that we had on before the bad news happened. I don't know if you follow me on this, but this is all psychology here. What news could hit us that could make us go through just like butter? Here for a full day, we just didn't get through. And now all of a sudden today, we would go from down here to up there with no effort. Yes, that's possible. But to get through it, hmm, it's mostly unlikely. Now, this, the, the idea of this video, so you guys can identify where that perfect recovery could happen. And see this yellow line here on the perfect recovery? And let's move to right now what we had during the day and boom now this makes it the perfect recovery we hit the line right on the dot here at the end of the day making it what i call the perfect recovery as i said would you take profit 
when it reaches that line, I would certainly do so. On the following day, we can probably continue. Talking about day trading here, you took your your um, your play at the bottom. You're not quite sure where you're going to go to. Well, if you monitor the other tickers like we just did, if you notice, they pretty much all hit that perfect recovery at the same time, which was the end of the day. If you took your profit there, it was probably the, the best you could have had. Obviously, this looks very bullish as it continues the upside. But remember, targets, plan ahead, plan in the exit is probably what will save you all the time. So I hope you guys learned a little bit about how to figure out and how to pinpoint where could the perfect recovery be when you're on a very bush, bullish run like we were. Oh, one last thing. Let's look at SPY, what SPY did, just to see if there is any relationship with what, with everything I'm telling you. The idea, this is SPY, the idea is to take a step back a little bit and look at what the chart looked like a few days ago. And this is Monday. There was a big gap down. Uh, here it is here uh, from from the, the weekend. Uh, well, not from Monday, but obviously it was closed on Monday, but uh, from Tuesday morning, there's a big gap down here. Uh, it was trying and trying and trying and not crossing. Eventually we became bullish, but uh, let's just let's just draw a line here and see what it does. Uh, what I mean by this is, you know, I'm taking the line very close to that. So basically what I mean is this. Um, follow me here. It did want to cross, but it didn't. It was all pre-market. And then as soon as the market opened, it became support. See how it becomes support. It's a big wick we see on that support. Um, this is noise, I like to call it, and then back down on support. So this line we have talked about earlier this week, that's pretty important. Let's move to today, um, what happened and see how it does. Uh, it became bullish and then this is the morning that we had this low. Let's take this 410 low. Ah, I moved the line. Sorry. I'm trying to do my best here to see. This is the line that we picked around 428.5, right? And this is the perfect recovery to support that we just talked about from that 410 to this resistance. So all the other tickers that behaved in the perfect recovery manner. Now this one behaved in the manner where it reached a very defined support line that it had support and resistance line. So all of this linked together. I mean, if you're only looking at one ticker at once and you're hoping for it to go up or down, I mean, there is a relation with the rest of the market and that correlation going from one ticker to the other, the movers, the strong ones, the, the ones that are, um, that have more relative, relative strength. You guys can all monitor these guys together in order to be able to find the perfect exit, which was in this particular day, all together at once reaching the perfect recovery. Hope you guys learned something. See you soon.